I was way down. I was way down. I was way down. You lift me up. Y'all sing with me now. When I was away down, I was way down. When I was away down, you lift me up. Hallelujah. When I was away down, I was way down. I was away down. You lift me up. Children, y'all sound good. Now, I expect that was the song y'all were singing in that British Methodist Episcopal Church up there in Canada, St. Catharines, Ontario West. You see, I was a member of the African American Women's Association, Missionary Association, Cooking Association, and the Church Building Association, among a few others. I believe that one day when that uh, Frank Sanborn, I believe that was the name of that writer, he came into that church. And I believe y'all were singing that song. When I was singing again, y'all. I was way down. I was way down. I was way down. You lift me up. I was way down. I was way down. I was way down. You lift me up. Can I start? Remember, keep singing, y'all. I was way down. I was way down. I was way And the good Lord. The good Lord. I was way down. He lift me up. Yes, I remember. I was way down. I was way down. I was way down. You lift me up. Yes, Lord. Oh, I got the Holy Ghost that day. And when I got the Holy Ghost, I commenced to hooping and hollering, hallelujah, screaming and crying out. And that man, he must have said, who's that woman? Who is that woman? Hooping, hollering, making all that noise. They said, well, that's Harriet Tubman. You remember Harriet Tubman? Harriet Tubman. He said, that's Harriet. I remember that like it was only yesterday. Must have been late 19th century. Oh, yeah. I was part of all of them. Helped to build a church. You see, if you've been through what I've been through, and God lifted you up, well, you have something to sing about too. Because right. I, I, I come, well, as my friend said, you the truth say, mm -hmm. I come from a different field, mm -hmm. field of the slave. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 I come off kind of, I come up like a neglected weed. Well. Don't know nothing about no freedom, haven't never heard about it. I remember, that they take two long boards and put them together. I come up with you call a breeding farm in Tidewater, Maryland, and they take the gruel, the corn, and they pour it in that there trial, they call it. And instead of them calling the pigs, suey, suey, they call us babies, picking in it. Picking in it, come on, picking in it. Come on, you picking this. Come on, you picking this. We take the oyster shells and we be up there going at it. Uh-uh. I didn't have the food all over my face. Because I had my shell, my spoon, and I eat. Old auntie sit at the bottom there. Old auntie sit with a great big old stick. And she watch all of us. Never did see her move anything but that stick. Call it a switch. She sat right there and she could reach all of us with that switch. Well, I... I wasn't particularly mischievous or nothing, but I I got beat a few times, I believe, and a few more times I didn't ask for it. Uh-uh. 
I'm talking about that time. I must have been about five or six years old. How old are you, little girl? Four years old? How old is you? Eight. Must have been about the age between you and you. Must have been about seven. And when I was seven, I'm going to tell you what happened. See, I, I sat on the gate post in the Broders Plantation. Back of me is the big house. And if you look right on over there, that's where the quarters was. Now, the quarters is where all the slaves was kept. They call it the quarters. And in every corner, there was a china berry tree. Underneath that china berry tree, they'd snap the beans and shell the peas, wash the babies. Underneath that china berry tree, that's where they take my, what you call umbilical cord and wrap it in a cotton sack like this here. Buried it right on underneath that china berry tree. Well, uh, I sat right up there on that gate post, and right outside the gate post was called Rolling Road. Rolling Road went right on down to the sea. Now, at the end of Rolling Road, there was a big ship. And they'd take that there hog head and roll it right on down Rolling Road, roll it right in that ship, and that ship take off. And when that ship come back, they had a heap of load of money on it. Had a heap of load of money. Well, uh, I seen wagons come up Rolling Road, and Wagons went right on back to the field and they, they take the corn and the, and, the, and the wheat and heap it up on there. And that went right on down the road and road. Now at the end of the road and road, there was a big ship. And they heave ho, tote that, and that ship, and that ship take off. And that ship come back, had a heap of load of money on it. Had a heap of load of money. My master, well, uh, he was a gambling man. He gambled that Caroline property from his brother-in-law stepson, somebody. And uh, I seen a, I see a wagon come up rolling road. And that wagon went right on clear around to the corners. And that wagon come on back around. And that wagon went right on down the rolling road and my two sisters were tethered and they marched right on down the rolling road. Now at the end of rolling road, there was a big ship and they marched my sisters in that ship and that ship take off. And that ship come back, had a heap load of money on it. Had a heap load of money, but I ain't never seen my sisters this side of freedom no more. So y'all understand when that, what you call a Georgia man come, that be a prospector. Come up on the wagon. Went down over yonder. Went on around to the corners. And I started screaming for my mama. Mama! Mama! And you see my mama? You see my mama? Mama! 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 I didn't know it, but mama, mama's at the corner already. In the corners, like he said, had a hand against the threshold of the door with a big old stick. That man come on out there. Now I'm gonna tell you, you're all about the 15, 16 people I tell it to you, but don't you tell them, cause mama told us never to get in grown folks business. But I was in the corn crib and watching everything that happened. Well, I seen that man come to mama. He say, give me that little child. Mama say, uh-uh, mm-mm. You can't have my child. That's my baby. You well, can't have my baby. Well, no, you can't have my child. Yo, oh, you try to take my child, I'm going to crack your head clean open, Mama say. All I know, that man come a-riding quick fast on that there wagon, holding his head, and went right on down the rolling road. I ain't seen him since. That next day, we took my brother in. Hit him out there in the woods for a whole month. That man didn't come back, no, sir. Y'all can understand that the, when I seen that wagon come up rolling road, white woman sat up there on that wagon. And I sat right up there on that gate post and I seen her. Mama! Mama! 
Mama was gone. Well, uh, I remember my brother Henry, when that man come, uh, any time they call Henry, they call Mama, Mama say, I'm gonna be with my baby. He said, I didn't call you. Rick, get on away from you. I said, I just came here to get a glass of water, Ma. Said, That's what Mama said. She didn't come to get no water. She come to catch her, keep an eye on Henry. Well, Mama wasn't there that day that I could see. She come up on that wagon. She say, I'm looking for the most dark gal on your whole plantation. But she didn't say gal. All of a sudden, I hear somebody calling, Minty, Minty. That the Negro name. And don't mean stupid. Well, do I look stupid to you? Mm, maybe so. Well, all I know is that my mama told me to climb up on that woman's wagon. And I said, Mama, I don't want to go. Mama, please don't make me go. Who gonna wash your hair, Ma? Who gonna, who gonna tote your water, Mama? Please don't make me go, Mama. I don't want to go. Please, Mama, don't make Mama say, you better get up there on that wagon. You know what's good. So I climb up on that wagon. I listen to my mama. Well, that wagon took up right on down the road and road. Now at the end of rolling road. I say at the end of rolling road. At the end of rolling road, there wasn't no big ship at all. Just a great big old house. <laughs> and a great big old baby they give me. Must have been seven years old, and they had me tend the baby. I ain't never tend no baby before. What did I know about babies? All I know is that baby was so big and I was so small, I had to sit down and rock baby, <laughs> rock baby, <laughs> rock baby, all night long. Well, all night I stand up, and if I fell asleep, my mistress took that switch and snapped it upside my head and I wake up. Rock baby, rock baby, cheer it. I didn't know it back then. But God was preparing me for the night watches when I was a soldier for the United States government. I stood night guard duty right down here in these parts, Buford, South Carolina. Florida, a place called Alusta. I believe I was there too, standing guard duty. Many things can happen to you as a child. You don't know why, but God's preparing you for something later on. Well, uh, I grew. I wasn't fit to take care of no babies. Wasn't fit to take care of nobody but myself. Wasn't fit for no housework no more. So I worked with my papa out in the field. Papa tell me, come here, gal. Manti, come here. Come here, Manti. Papa say, see that, that star up in the sky? The bright one, look up, you see it? That be the North Star. The North Star be the brightest star in the whole sky. I say, yes, sir, Papa. See that, that tree? Feel on the side of that tree. Yes, sir, Papa. I listen to everything my Papa told me. I say, it feel all soft like Papa. Papa say that be moss. Moss only grows on the north side of the tree. Papa say, see that pond? Get that water lily out that pond. Thank you, kindly. I say, OK, Papa. He say, that water lily, good for the fevers. If water be running out your body, you just take that and you boil it down real good. And it snatch the fever out your body. Yes, sir, Papa. Yes, sir, Papa. Yes, sir, Papa. I listen to my Papa good. Everything he said, I salt away. Y'all know what salt away mean? That mean you put it on the back burner because you might need it one day. Amen. Well, I, I grew big and strong and I worked with my papa. Must have been out in the field one day and while well, it was Sunday, 
See, I had permission to work on Sundays. Had a vegetable patch out there and bought two head oxen. Hey, ain't that funny? Two head oxen, one head slave out there working. Master come right on around that bend there. Big old wagon, heap load of people all dressed up in Sunday finest. He look at me. He said, gal, see that plow there in the field? Pick that plow up, gal. He said, you hear me? Pick it up. Well, I'm here to picking up that plow. He said, strap it on you, gal. And I'm <laughs> He said, pull that plow, gal. And I pulled that plow. And I pulled it. About four feet, he said, that's enough, gal. He said, I told you. Didn't I tell you? That's the most bright girl on this whole plantation. That witch, she worked better than two men, but three men. She's strong. I remember thinking I was walking away. I ain't no mule. I ain't no horse. I'm just a gal. It's an ordinary gal. I don't know if it was that day or well, one day was just as good as the next. White woman came to me. No, she said, she said, gal, if you're ever thinking about being free. See that that shack on the other side of the river? My name be Liza Hull. You come and you knock on my door. She be true, she be true, free. Well, uh, I grew, I got married. I got married, that man John tell me. Y'all know John. Free man, came from Maryland. Could have been a woman, he wasn't in the whole world. That was unusual thing. Free man, all them free women in Maryland. And he looking at me. I'm just an ordinary gal. He looking at me. I couldn't believe it. But I tell you how I was. I go in one side of the field to work. John tell me to go to the other side. I step a right. He step a right. I step a left. He step a left. That man kept on. Ooh. He kept on. Well, what you call sparking me. That's what he did. He sparking me. Well, John, tell me, get on away from me, John. You's like a bad cold. I can't get rid of you. <laughs> you hear him? You hear what he say? Hey, woman. Hey, gal. Don't you hear blind boy full of calling you? You so sweet. My baby, you so sweet. Come on, hey. My little woman, so sweet. Yeah, you know I love you. I love you to the bone. I bet you can't wait on two blind boys full of calm home. You so sweet. My baby, you so sweet. Get on out here. My little woman, so sweet. Well, he sparked me. <laughs> He's barking me. Now I got. I, I need your help. Could you come over here, please? Could you come over here, please, sir? You ain't invisible, brother. Well, I tell you, this ain't quite like the quilts I was making for everybody when I was coming up north bringing them out of Maryland. You know them people who say, it's so cold here. It's so cold in Canada. So I be sewing the quilt for them under the moonlight star as I was waiting for my connection. I said one day, I said, y'all complaining? If it's too cold, go back down there into slavery. I ain't nobody. I ain't seen nobody go down there. You see? Me? Yeah, I ain't seen nobody. But anyway, me and John Tubb, we went to the cornfield. 
<laughs> and me and John tell me <laughs> why <laughs> they take a broom and they put it in the middle of the field like that. Right. Me and John tell me one and two and three, we jumped the broom and that means we married. Free and true, him and now we be married now. John taught me how to pretty smell, I told you, dear. <laughs> well, we married and I, I, I started having them dreams bad. I had them dreams ever since I was hitting the head as a little gal uh, running for the overseer. Oh, overseer missed me with that two pound weight of metal. Missed the man, but hit me right on the head. Bust my head clean open, blood spurting everywhere. It said I must have had a brain fever. Would have gone clear into my brain if I didn't have on my shawl. No, no, I don't mean that shawl Queen Victoria got me later on. No, that, that, that shawl is in that uh, mausoleum museum in uh, Washington City. Not that one, no, 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 no. Had another shawl on it. It saved my life. Well, anyway, me and John Tillman got married, and well, he had a little money, but not enough to get me a gold ring. So I, I, I sold my quilts like that and put that on my bed. That was called my wedding trousseau, right. my quilts. But uh, if you see this, this is where you could get your shackles cut off. If you see this here, I'm clear across the country. Nine box, loose box. Time to get your boxes packed. Well, Time to get your belongings together for the journey. If you be a cooper, get your tools. Blacksmith, get your tools. Carpenter, sew it, get your tools. Cause right now I'm right in the back of your plantation. Hmm. Tight boxes, man, I'm right here. Right. See, I, I didn't go into any more quarters after I seen my mama suffering that day, but I'm back in back of your plantation. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I go to the beginning. Flying geese. Going north. Going north or going south. That's the only one that's different here. Yeah. Now, sometimes you gotta go out of your way to get where you really want to go. You have to be obedient to God. If God say you go this way, you gotta go this way. He say you gotta go that way, gotta go that way. It may not make no sense. That's what I did that day on that train. Little gal must be about 14 years old. And I, I had a book pretending I was reading. I didn't know if it was upside down or not. I, I asked the fashion master to give me a ticket. He told me, hold on a few minutes. And he walked away and that little gal started crying. I said, girl, you better hold your peace. Don't you draw no attention to him. He come back and give us the ticket. I don't know if the book was upside down or not, but I knew that though God told me to go south, cause it wasn't nobody looking for Harriet, tell me no runaways further in the south, that I was going the right way. Flying geese, North Star, Wedding rings, nine box, bow tie. That's where you went to get your free clothes. I see all your fellas nowadays, some gals too, walking around with the pants hanging down. All over your behind, just walking down, thinking you look like something, you don't look like nothing. You don't look like you're somebody. You walk around like that back then, you, you can be put back into slavery. You gotta put on your free clothes so as not to draw attention to yourself. Bear Paul, Buxton Wheel, Buxton, Canada. After what was that, 1850, fugitive slave law? I had to take you all the way into Canada all the way into Canada. <laughs> Some people call it the mm, bloodhound law. That's what we call it. Buxton Wheelman, I'm gonna take you to Canada. This right here is one of the most special monkey wrench. See, all these here 
Thank you, Connie. Y'all can fold it up now. Watch them. They soldiers. They're going to fold it up like you fold up an American flag. Watch them. Watch, watch, watch. Hey. Uh, yeah. I know how soldiers do. <laughs> well, almost. Almost. Yeah, almost. Yeah, almost. almost. <laughs> Thank you, Connie, sir. Much obliged. Much obliged. You're welcome. Well, uh, that sign, Monkey Wrench. Get your tools, get your tools, get your tools. Because where you're going, you're going to do your job, but you're going to get paid for it. Carpenter, Smithy, all these four fine people who all that time had to wear what you call a medallion around the neck if they go into Charleston City, all into the cities, even to Pennsylvania with your masters. They had what you call a medallion. And on the medallion, there was a number and your name. See, you always had to belong to somebody. Right. They had to account for you if you was in the city. You don't go just loitering around everywhere. Had to belong to somebody, a white man or a white woman. You had to be identifiable. You got a number and your name is on that paper. If your name is not on that paper, you get locked up and put in jail. And some of you, like you say, get sold to the second most profitable business, aside from the plantation business, the railroads. <laughs> Five in the morning. Nick, whoop, feeling kind of good. Axe punch shoulder, talk to the wood, talk to the wood. Talk to the wood, axe punch shoulder, talk to the wood. Splitting rails, cheering up there, must be five and six years old. Snow come up to your knees in Alabama. And they splitting the rails, talking to the wood, talking to the wood. Later on, chain game, aren't you? But before that, they give the mass some money and they rent you out or let you out. You see, everybody didn't own a slave. No, sir. But you, what you do, what you call let a slave or rent a slave. You don't have to have that much money. I was six pence. Six pence. That's how much they let me out for. Many of you don't think you was a part of slavery, but you was all a part. From here to Wales, ain't one cotton shirt don't have the drip of a slave's sweat on it. Sugar in your tea to the flax in your suit. You was all a part of it. But I could surely say, when I was away head down, I was away down when I was away down. You lift me up. Yeah. I was away down. I was way down when I was away down. You lift me up. All children. 1913, I got up early that morning. Had been feeling kind of sickly. Uh, Hadn't been up for a whole week. My Lord. Went downstairs and made me some biscuits and my coffee. Scrambled my own eggs. Mm. Went back upstairs and laid in the bed and they took that great big old white shawl that they give me. And they stayed all around me, all the people. I'm talking about in the Harriet Tubman home for the ages. Home I started. I wanted to call it the John Brown home, but they said that wouldn't be fit. We got to call it the Harriet Tubman home. I said, okay, y'all think that's all right, all right. So I ate my breakfast and I told them, I want four pallbearers. Yeah. I want the red roses. Mm -hmm. And I want you to say this about me. And I was all them people around like I've been doing all my life. That night, 
They sang that song one more time. And I was hoping y'all could sing it. Swing low, sweet chariot. Thank you, children. Coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming forth to carry me home. I look over Jordan and what did I see? Coming forth to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming forth to carry me home. Oh, children, I'm so glad that you sang my song for me. Y'all know that's my best song. I really like that. I really like how y'all sang that song. And I want to send my love yes, Lord. to all the churches, well. all God's people. Tell him I send my love. Yes, Lord. My roof, top of my mouth. Tongue came up, stuck clave to it. And I gave up the ghost. My, 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 is. A year later, Booker T. Washington. One of the most learned African American men in all the country, maybe even the whole world. Well. He come and spoke at my memorial. And my name, my name was named on a on the ship, Eleanor Roosevelt. Put my likeness on the stamp. And I declare, do tell. They gonna put my name, my face on the $20 bill. If that don't be all, well, oh Lord, mercy. Man, 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 man. Well, I, I, I ain't never had two nickels to rub together. <laughs> but they gonna use my face. Ain't God good? I say, ain't it good? Yes. Who would've known? When I was away down, when I was away down, when I was away down, you lift me up. When I was away down, I was way down. When I was away down, he lifted me up. God said, I've been with you through six troubles. Yeah. I said, God, could you be with me one more time? And if you could be with me, he could be with all of you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.